All right, welcome back everybody. No jokes this time. Moving on to some hydraulic work, both the clutch and the brake. Getting the master cylinders rebuilt. I rebuilt them several years ago, but the rubber seals didn't hold up. And uh, just going through, we're getting the piping routed and all that kind of stuff, the last little odds and ends that I need to do. If anything scares me, it's probably the brakes that scare me the most. Again, everything's brand new. It's a single cylinder, master cylinder system. So if one pipe breaks, you essentially have no brakes. Thanks for watching. Got the brake and clutch pipes piped in. I did it off camera because I didn't want you to hear me hollering and cussing and everything else. I don't like bending pipe. Got the relief in here, three curls. I did it around the uh, or around a spray uh, paint can like I thought I was going to. This guy, the brake, just a little bit of a bows here, and they try to stick together. And then this one comes down, follows the wire loom, and goes up into a relief. I'm pretty sure. That's how it, uh, it was out of the factory, if I remember. And then this one goes all the way down and into the clutch sleeve cylinder. What I have here is the clutch pedal from the black car. A little brass bushing in there. If you can tell, the, uh, this is where the master cylinder connects into with the fulcrum pin. It's a little out of round. Dorothy's is much, much worse. I'll show you. There's Dorothy's. You can see it's not quite all the way through, but real close. But what's happening is, is when the clutch pedal is all the way out, it's smacking the firewall there because it's giving it so much more play. So instead of taking this all back apart, even though I'm going to have to eventually, I'm going to grab the black cars. I'm going to completely fill in that hole with weld metal and then re-drill it out. Now, of course, I want to keep the hole centered as much as possible. So I got a piece of tape here and I'm going to use the piece of tape to mark where the center should be and then put it back on after I weld it up to be able to mark the spot. Now there's a lot of overflow here and a trick that I found, I don't even remember how long ago, take a hammer, smack it along the edges of the metal and it'll just essentially peel right off. So now you have a perfect reproduction of that piece. All right, so now that I've got that, I don't expect the top and the bottom of the hole to have been compromised at all. So I'm going to use that as a center mark, and then I'm going to use right to left and center it up right to left, and just assume that the center of the hole is going to be in the center of this peak, which I don't have any reason to believe that it's not, and then weld it up, take this piece of tape off, weld it up, put the piece of tape back down, I'll be able to find my center again. Peel that piece of tape off, put it somewhere safe. And now I'll go ahead and fill that in with weld metal. I'm going to uh, crank the welder up, nice thick metal here. I can get away with some uh, higher currents and uh, wire flows that I'm used to, so that'll be nice. Alrighty, so that's all filled in. Now what I'll do is I'll grind it all smooth, drill it out. Alright, not perfect, but I don't care. So now I'll put that piece of tape back on there, and get it drilled up. Alright, so since this is such thick metal, and because it's weld metal that's in there, which is a little bit harder than regular metal, I'm gonna step my way up, start a little pilot hole and work my way up before I get to the 5 16 of an inch that's required. All right, got my pilot holes drilled. Now I got the step drill, and I'm going to 5 16 of an inch so I'll get to the first one, the second one, and through the third one, and that should be it. I'm gonna check it. I have the, uh, the little pin guy here. I'll check it to make sure before I go too far. All 
All right, pretty good. Pin fits, that's what really matters. And this, uh, probably should try to find a new pin just to make sure that this one isn't worn out. But now there you go, so that's pretty well centered up. Now I'm gonna throw it in the sandblaster real quick, get it cleaned up, get it primed and painted. The uh, brake, or excuse me, the clutch pedal that I re-welded and, and drilled out, that's now been installed on the housing here. You may notice that it's still painted in primer. This, um, I'll, I'll catch that up later. I'm going to put it back on the car now, and then I'm going to get to rebuilding the master cylinder. I'll show you how I do that. I got some parts here from uh, the Roadster factory to carry that out. And just real quick, so you can get an example or an indication of how... Uh, how oblong that that hole is from the years and years of it the clutch going in that's uh, almost you know half again as big so clutch master cylinder here the uh, I've already popped the internals out checked out the bore the bore looks fine I do have a small nylon brush that I ran in there just to kind of clean any up and any uh, you know any random stuff or whatever but but that's about it um, the kit that I have here I got from the Roadster factory like I had mentioned comes with the cap This is the seal here that goes there This is the one that I'm looking at to cause me to replace it because it's a little beat up This little guy here Goes back here. I'll show you that in a second This is the seal for the cap which I'm good on because I've got a cap obviously I hold on to it and then this here I don't know if this is for a dual piston one or if it's just for a slightly different model and they just are making one big kit that I'm not positive of but I won't need this at all uh, a couple things to point out it does not come with a new circlip or at least this one didn't so that's something that you don't want to lose and that you want to hold on to this uh, this piece of rubber here doesn't feel quite as thick and as good it does say made in England but I don't think it's a girling one but uh, I'm going to hold on to this one that I've got right there. I checked it out and ran, you know, tried to look for holes and stuff like that. And there's no holes in it. So I'm going to hold on to that one. So the way that I'm going to do this is I need to get this guy off here. And you've got this spring. So the spring obviously is for your pressure on it. And then this piece right here, you can kind of see that little notch cut out. You only just have that one. There's a little tab in there. That tab needs to get bent out, and then that will release what it's trying to do is stay in there. Um, so you gotta bend that little tab out. So I'll just grab a little flathead. Bend that tab out, and then you've got that piston in your hand. That's really all there is to it there. Obviously, when you put it back in, you'll want to uh, undo that. So what I'm gonna do is this little cap, I'm gonna push it in, and move it out of the way and it's going to release so that comes apart if you can see inside that cap the hole is kind of oblong I don't know how well you can see that but that's where that little pin fits through and it's just a friction fit after that so this little rubber seal here that's going to get replaced that's what this little guy is so, but right now, and obviously this comes off and there's another little washer in here. A little spring washer in here. You don't want to lose that. This kit did not come with that and I don't, I don't think they do. It's just a software kit. I'm going to go ahead, get this rubber piece off. You obviously don't want to gouge the cylinder if you can help it, but you do have the rubber piece to provide a seal. And I'm going to clean this up real good. I'll do that all off camera. Um, probably stick it in the, uh, in the bench grinder with the with the brass wheel and clean it up and then I'll come back when I'm ready to put it back together got the rubber seal off got this rubber seal off so this is the little rubber seal that goes on the plunger end if you can see that's kind of drilled out a little bit there kind of bored out whatever you want to call that and that side's smooth so here you've got this with a little notch cut into it or or uh, whatever that's properly called so you want to put the bore end down onto there and just kind of presses on. It's not uh, not that complicated of a fit there, and that just fits on like that. Then you want not forget your little spring washer. That goes on next. That all goes into this little cup. Fits down like that, so you can kind of see it sprung a little bit. Kind of bounces back, and then that you want to stick down. If I can show you with the spring lined up, you can see that kind of 
snowman looking hole down there so that the end of this pin will go into the larger end and then stick down to the smaller end to stay in there just kind of push that together so now the springs under a little bit of tension not too much it's not a real strong spring anyway all right so next up is putting the rubber seal on the plunger and the workshop manual has a great picture of this so this is the brake pedal side that's going to push in on the thing and then you can see if you look the plunger is going to be flared towards the inside I guess you could call it of the chamber real life is going to look like that so this rubber seal is going to go on with the flare towards the back of the master cylinder all right so it's important obviously that you put that on in the direction the right direction I'm going to be using dot five brake fluid this stuff is uh, not water susceptible doesn't absorb water and it also will not eat your paint the only disadvantage that I know of is that it's got a lower boiling point and I don't think I'm going to really ride the brakes that hard in Dorothy to, to worry about my brake fluid boiling. But you cannot mix the silicone based stuff, which is what this is, with anything else, dot three, dot four. And there's also something called a dot 5.1, which was obviously a bad idea because that is not compatible with the silicone based stuff either. But right now I'm going to use it as a lubricant to put on this seal just to give me a little bit uh, kind of, uh, like I said, lubricant. Just like that really all there is to it so again the flare goes into the master cylinder so now that's going to clip in like that and then that little clip that I bent out I'm going to push that back in now so that it goes underneath the little lip of the the piston so this little lip right here of that piston that's where that clip needs to kind of press under so I'm just going to use my little flathead screwdriver and press that back in kind of eyeball it and make sure that it's hitting there and then it's not going to uh, inadvertently come out. It looks like it's going to be fine. It's not doesn't need to be jammed down in there. You're not going to have a, lot, a whole lot of movement side to side on this thing. So now we're ready to put this guy back together. Again, I'm going to lubricate the inside of the uh, of the chamber here. All right. So now that the piston's in, you want to put this guy in, and the circ clip goes over top of this like washer there. Right, that's what holds all this stuff in there. So obviously you don't want to put this together wrong. All right now, what I did right then is I pushed the piston in a little bit just so that it's completely seated and get that or get that inserted and then so that washer will seat completely. Otherwise your uh, locking pin will not seat too well. All right, it snaps back a little bit. That's good put this rubber seal back on all right so that guy's on there now the next trick is the boot all right so the master cylinder is going to go into the clamp like that and then the boot is going to come in here next so we'll go ahead and we'll get this tightened down all right and then the boot comes in Try to get it as seated as I can. All right, that's pretty well seated. Now, obviously, you can see that the pain is going to be, you got to move this up out of the way, get the thing clamped in, and then you get to put that um, on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I got my, uh, my clips here to get the pedal connected to the master cylinder. I'll go ahead and connect that real quick. And then, really, that's, that's really it. Not too bad. I got the pedal housing started. Go ahead and get the rest of the bolts started here for the housing. See how much better that clutch pedal is away from the bulkhead and that connection. Now that the killer, like I said, is getting this little, this little seam inside of there and I'm just not gonna deal with that now. So next up is gonna be the master cylinder, or excuse me, the slave cylinder. I did get a rebuild kit for the slave cylinder. My slave cylinder is aftermarket. I'll explain to you why here in a second why that is. This here is my slave cylinder made by a company called County. Turns out this is the same company that I got my pistons from. I, I assume that they're not US origin, but I'm not exactly sure. Stuff seems to be okay. The problem that I'd had with my original one, and I still have it, is that brake fluid had settled out in it and gotten old and crusty. 
and just sat here and it's eventually corroded the aluminum where it didn't give me confidence that uh, that the thing would hold up now I did when I first drove the car around the block a couple times after I first bought it and got it running it did work but I just I just didn't feel good about that and uh, you can't get original girlings anymore you can get some master cylinders but you can't get the slaves anymore and I just didn't buy one used so but if you can kind of see you probably can't but that pistons jammed all the way in there and it's not coming back so I just want to uh, take it apart inspect the inside of it like I said I bought a rebuild kit I'm not sure that the rebuild kit that I bought, it is for aftermarket slave cylinders. I got this from Roadster Factory as well. It's like three or four bucks, but I'm not positive that it's going to fit this guy. So I'm going to uh, hopefully not find any bad seals in here. And if I do, I have a new one. Yep, I don't see any pits or anything in that. All right, so anyway, it looks good to me. No problems there. Put it back together. There's uh, not a whole lot to this one. There's no fancy plunger or anything like that. It's just a spring. And this rubber seal, which is going to fit nicely right back in. And then uh, the circlip put it in there. I stole a circlip from another rebuild kit I had. And then I'll put the rubber seal back on it. Important safety tip, you notice this has got that notch in it there. And in the uh, housing on the transmission, there's a bolt that will run through that and prevent it from spinning. You want your bleed screw to be on top, not on the bottom. Air rises as compared to the fluid, so your air is going to collect in your eye point. So you want the bleed screw to be on top. It's not, you're not trying to gravity drain the fluid. You're trying to exhaust the air. So when you put this slave cylinder in, you have a choice, obviously, in where you want to put your bleed screw. You could. You want your bleed screw to be on top because that's where the air is going to collect. All right, so we got that brake or the uh, circ clip in there. Put that back on. This here is the mounting bracket that the slave cylinder goes in. This bolts up to the transmission through these two holes here. This is where that locking bolt goes. The reason you take this off, or you can, is it's a little easier to put the thing together like that. One, you've got the rubber here, and sometimes it gets hung up in here, and it's a little painful. So if you come through this way, it just makes it a little easier. It's like cheating. So I'll get, that, I'll get the thing started with it in there. And then the other thing I'll show you here in a second is you've got the push rod, obviously, that goes to the uh, throwout bearing. That needs to go inside of here, and it's just a little easier to see and line that up with this housing, because this housing, without the housing, because the housing blocks it. All right, so the safe cylinder's in there with the uh, locking bolt, and you can see it gives you a little bit of motion, but not enough, obviously, to turn all the way around. And I'll bring this over to the car and show you how it's going to look like on the car side. This guy right here, that's that push rod. So obviously, the push rod needs to go. Push rod needs to go in that hole there, and this thing mounts up like like this again with the bleed screw up top so I'll go ahead and again this just lets me see that push rods going in that hole so I'm gonna block this shot but I'll come back and show you after it's done that guy's all in there another nice thing about doing it this way is when you push the uh, slave cylinder onto the rod you can feel the rod engage with the piston and kind of push it back so you know that you've got the um, the slave cylinder in contact with the throw out bearing rod. So I don't tighten this stuff up all that much. They both have lock washers on it. It's uh, it's not like you're not sealing anything with this. You're just trying to prevent incidental motion. You're really not going to have too much back and forth on the slave cylinder at all, even if that clamp's a little loose because that bolt's going to keep it there. But you know you don't want to you don't want it flying around in there either. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, the clutch hydraulics are complete. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the brake master cylinder now. Same exact process. It's the same exact master cylinder. The only exception with the brakes is that the res reservoir is a little bit taller because you have more fluid. But uh, every everything else, the construction is identical. So I won't show you that. But I'll get that in there. And then I think we're going to get to bleeding out the uh, at least the clutch, if not the brakes. Tell you what, that seat is really close to that door. So yeah, I got the driver's seat in. So that's cool feel like I can uh, pretend driving it. What uh, I did, I went around, I tightened up all the pipes, all the brake pipes, I think I got them all. Uh, there's only two connections for the clutch pipe. Again, for these connections, the point is not to really, you know, bear down on it. All the flared fittings, you want the flare to cause the seal and you're just snugging it up. So there's no, uh, don't really, don't really tighten down too hard on it. So I'm going to gravity bleed everything I'm not going to pump brakes and all that kind of stuff the, the clutch will obviously be first 
I'll get through that. That'll be quick. There's not much in there at all, obviously. And then uh, the brakes, when you bleed the brakes, you start at the furthest wheel from the master cylinder. So that'll be the rear passenger and then the rear driver and then the front passenger and then the front driver will be the order in which I bleed. And again, I'm going to gravity drain on those as well. To do that and to make it easy, I'm going to probably pull the wheels off and, and put the car up on jack stands. And uh, that's, that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to get to that tonight or not. But, uh, but I'll pound the clutch out real quick and, and uh, see how that goes for me and then go from there. So there's the slave cylinder. I have a little Tigon tube on there. And then here I've got the brake fluid obviously in the clutch master cylinder. So I'm going to fill this guy up. Make sure my bleed screw is tight right now just so it doesn't uh, uncontrollably run on me. And again, just because this stuff doesn't eat paint doesn't mean I don't want to be careful. Been conditioned over all my years to fear brake fluid. Pour a little bit in here. All right, so now that's full. I'll go down, I'll loosen the bleed screw, and then start running the, uh, running the fluid through. Now obviously, I want to come up here and check every once in a while to make sure that I haven't drained this all the way down. And it looks like it's actually coming down by itself a little bit right now. Yeah, if I had a leak here, I'd expect it to kind of run down the, the uh, piston shaft. So it must just be gravity draining a little bit, filling itself up. I'll pour a little bit in. Air is compressible, so the weight of the fluid is going to compress some of that air. All right, so I'm going to kind of break my rule here and loosen the bleed screw with just a regular 3 8 inch wrench instead of using my uh, tubing wrench because it won't fit on there with the hose on. Lose the hose here. All right, just crack it a little bit. Not in any hurry. All right, fluid levels coming down pretty good. Pop the master cylinder off. Still no fluid out of the slave yet. Just kind of shooting that. I think you can probably watch that going down. Again, just a gravity drain. Oh, got fluid now. I can hear it. Draining it into the, uh, the little catch bucket under there. All right, so we'll tighten it up. All right, again, that's the same thing. You don't want to gronk on that thing. You'll strip that out too. All right, so I got a pretty solid level in the reservoir. Now I'm going to pump the clutch several times, get in the car, pump, pump the clutch several times here, and see if I can uh, make the level move at all. Well, that was short-lived. When I put pressure on the pedal, even a little bit, I get fluid leaking out right at the union, right here in between the pipe and the uh, and the thing there which tells me that it's not flowing real well it should be able to withstand the pressure that I build there but obviously it's not and it's coming in between not leaking out of the threads but leaking in between if you look at this brake pipe here it looks the same as the clutch one does the end is flared inward a little bit instead of a bulb fitting but if you look inside there and you won't be able to see it really well it kind of looks like it should have the opposite type of flare. None of the pipes have that type of flare, however. So I kind of find it hard to believe. I know these automatic kits are got a really good reputation. I find it hard to believe that that's, that's wrong. So I got to kind of figure that out a little bit and, uh, and wonder why that that's, that's happening. So when we last left our intrepid adventurer, figured out that I had a pretty good size leak here and essentially making this pipe uh, worthless. And the Concern that I had initially was that the flare on the inside of the master cylinder is concave and on the pipe itself what you have for these automec kits is something referred to as a universal flare so I'll show you that here well if you take a look this like I said is a universal flare so if you if you can see the edge here you can see that it's almost like a bubble flare but then on the inside it's convex. If you have a seat like this that's cut, in other words like it is on the inside of the master cylinder, you're going to have that outer edge here, and I know that's kind of hard to see, but that outer edge there is what's going to seal on that. If you have a concave one, you have the inner edge that's going to seal on that. So no matter what kind of internal fitting you have, this pipe should work for all of that. So somewhere I've got a piece of dirt or something like that. Either the pipe has got uh, a little chunk out of it or something like that. So I'll take the pipe back off and investigate that. Or inside the master cylinder itself on that seating surface in there, something's up. 
So we'll, uh, we'll do some investigation, see what I can figure out. Bristle brush to the rescue, little bottle brush here. Yeah, it looks nasty, but I did clean up the end of it. Uh, but it seems to have worked. Uh, all I did was just kind of put it in and, and twist it just to kind of clean up the seat a little bit. I might have just a little bit. I pumped it several times. Feels okay. I don't, uh, I've only driven the car four years ago, so I don't really have a good idea of what the clutch should feel like. It feels okay. It doesn't feel great, but it feels okay. So I'm not sure that I'm going to really be able to test that until I try to put the car in motion. But right now I'm going to do one more bleed on it, and then I guess I'll uh, move on to doing the brakes. A lot more piping with that one. Car's up on jack stands. I'm going to fill the brake master cylinder with fluid. And again, you want to start from the furthest wheel. So I'm going to start all the way back here on the passenger side brake. Obviously in the wheel arch here, this is the, the, uh, the brake piston that's in here. The bleed screw is here. The brake line's in here. This is the contraption and the, and the linkage for the emergency brake, which I've released. So what I'm going to do now is, is like I said, is gravity feed. I went through the other day and tightened up all the connections. So I'm going to pour some fluid in the reservoir and just see how that goes first and uh, see if I can find any obvious leaks and then start to actively bleed. So I've probably lost, I haven't done anything yet. I've looked for leaks. I did find one small one that I tightened up and seems to have stopped. But I haven't done any bleeding yet. And you can see that that master cylinder has lost a half a volume already and I've already filled it up once. All right, well, maybe I had a little bit more than a small leak. Forgot to tighten that, uh, that three-way bracket that's up there that comes back and splits between the two rear wheels. So now you can see here is the bleed screw, and uh, I got the cheesy hose connected to it. One thing I uh, don't like about these bleed screws is this rebuild kit was metric. So instead of a three-eighths of an inch, this is a 10 millimeter. All right, got fluid flowing. Go check my reservoir. Looks like there's a little bit of regular brake fluid in here left over. All right, so I said I thought there was a little bit of brake fluid left over. If you can see that little bit of yellow that's in there, I believe that's uh, dot three or dot four, whatever I had in there before. But just a little bit of residual probably just sitting in there. So the, the brake fluids are not compatible with each other, but I'm not gonna worry about a little residual like that. All right, so I got a pretty solid stream out of there. Again, gravity bleed in it, right? So you're not expecting it to shoot out like you would if you were, uh, you know, doing doing somebody helping you bleed or if you were under a vacuum pressure or something like that, or a vacuum, I should say. So now I'll uh, be happy with this side. I'll go over to the other side. I don't expect that to take long since I bled half of it anyway. Relatively solid stream out of the driver's side rear wheel. Now I, uh, I'll move up to the front about halfway or so on the reservoir, so I'll top that off a little bit before moving on. That's uh, obviously a big deal. You want to make sure that the reservoir is full the entire time because otherwise you just start sucking air in and do that all over again. Brakes are all bled. I'm going to get in the car real quick and see how they feel. The only thing that I haven't come up with yet that I really kind of wanted to was a, uh, a slick way to hydro statically test them. So maybe I can uh, I don't know, get a clamp or something and, and put some pressure against the brake pedal just to get some pressure through the brake line so that I can then go around and inspect for leaks and everything like that. But I'm going to want to do this gravity at least one more time. You know, once I pump it a couple times, get some, some pressure in the system, let them, uh, let them flow through some, some brake fluid again and, and just to make sure all that air is out of there. Got the front tires back on. I blood everything again. And uh, the brake pedal feels pretty good, believe it or not. So I don't... Uh, Again, I'll have to come up with some way to hydro it or whatever. So the master cylinders do have fill lines. Unfortunately, they're on the outside. There's not really a reference on the inside. But I'm going to fill them up to that fill line, give or take, and then um, monitor that when I come back and see if I've lost any fluid. I don't see any gross leaks. There's still some drips and drabs from where the leaks existed, but I think that's uh, at least stopped for now. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. I'm trying to jump around a little bit, give it a little bit more exciting for you guys. Uh, a lot of the electrical stuff is really old. I'm talking a couple weeks now, so I'm trying to hodgepodge that all back together. So that's why my editing seems a little odd and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for your patience in that. I will eventually get everything documented. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And you have a good day. Cheers.